the patient with cancer. Dental hygiene care of the patient with cancer before, during, and after therapy strives to not only attain but also maintain a patient's oral health at the highest possible level. This contributes to the patient's general health and overall quality of life. Cancer treatment modalities, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, surgery, and hematopoietic cell transplantation have the potential to affect the oral cavity significantly. The patient will be under the care of a team of multidisciplinary specialists. The description. Cancer refers to a group of neoplastic diseases in which there is a transformation of normal cells into malignant ones. As cancer cells proliferate, the mass of abnormal tissue formed enlarges until it takes over the host site. It then sheds cells and spreads to distant sites, metastasis. The characteristics of benign and malignant neoplasms are different. Cancers are classified on the basis of the following. Origin of the tissue involved. Carcinomas from epithelial tissue and sarcomas from connective tissues. Type of cell from which they arise, namely an epithelial or connective tissue cell. Staging is a succinct standardized description of a tumor based on origin and extent. It's made up of three components, T, tumor size, N, presence or absence of lymph nodes, and M, presence or absence of distance metastasis. Incidence and survival. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States for adults under the age of 85 years. Survival depends on the following, the type of cancer, location and size of the tumor, presence of distance metastasis, tumor sensitivity to treatment, physical condition, comorbidities, and age. Risk factors. Numerous factors increase a person's risk for developing cancer, and these include tobacco, both cigarette smoking and the use of smokeless tobacco products are implicated in head and neck cancer, lung cancer, and bladder cancer. Alcohol, chronic long-term use, especially in combination with tobacco use, implicated in head and neck cancer, bladder cancer, and liver cancer. Sunlight, especially occupations requiring work under the sun, such as construction workers, farmers, as well as sunbathers. Environmental, occupational, exposure to asbestos, radon, coal dust, and chemicals. Viruses, Epstein-Barr virus implicated in Burkett's lymphoma. Hepatitis C implicated in liver cancer. Human papillomaviruses, 16 and 18, implicated in cervical cancer and cancer of the oropharynx tonsil, and base of tongue. Socioeconomic, late diagnosis with poor prognosis seen in lower socioeconomic populations in the inner city, rural, and working poor. Types of cancer, the most common types of cancer for men in order, prostate, lung and bronchus, colon, and rectum. In order for women, breast, lung and bronchus, colon, and rectum. How cancer is treated, Cancer is treated using a variety of different approaches based on the following. The location and size of the tumor. Treatment objective. Is there a cure, control, or palliation? The different approaches include surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, hematopoietic cell transplantation, hormone therapy, vaccine therapy, biotherapy, targeted therapies, a combination of two or more listed above that I just stated. Surgery. Surgery is the most common form of treatment for solid tumors, both malignant and non-malignant. Indications for surgery. Tumors that are small in size, localized, and easy to remove. Debulk or remove portions of large tumors before treatment, chemotherapy, or radiation therapy. Provide pain relief or prolong life when no chance of cure is possible. That's palliative or palliation. Chemotherapy. It involves the use of drugs that affect the rapidly dividing cancer cells at different points in the cell cycle. The drugs are used as a single agent or in combination. Side effects can be severe and frequently involve the oral cavity. Objectives. To destroy cancer cells and keep them from metastasizing, to prevent cancer from recurring, and to provide an improved quality of life. Indications. Eliminate a localized tumor too large for surgical removal. Treat cancer that it has metastasized to other parts of the body. Prevent cancer recurrence with maintenance therapy. Use before surgery to make a tumor easier to remove completely. Palliative. 
treatment of liquid tumors such as leukemia. Types of chemotherapy. Types of agents used for chemotherapy. Alkylating agents, antibiotics, anti-metabolites, -meta plant alkaloids, steroid hormones, proteasomone inhibitors, mammalian target of rapamycin inhibitors, and targeted therapies. Systemic side effects of chemotherapy. Chemotherapy affects both rapidly dividing cancer cells and rapidly dividing normal cells, hair, oral, gastrointestinal mucosa, and bone marrow. Halting cell division of normal cells may cause side effects that range from mild to life-threatening. The most common include the following, alopecia, which is hair loss, myelosuppression, bone marrow suppression, causing a reduction in blood counts, leading to anemia, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia, immunosuppression, inhibition of antibody responses resulting from leukopenia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite, gastrointestinal mucositis. Oral complications of chemotherapy. The following are oral complications resulting from chemotherapy. chemotherapy. Oral mucositis or stomatitis, an inflammation of the oral mucosa characterized by urethema, ulceration, and pain. Xerostomia, subjective report of oral dryness. Salivary gland hypofunction, objective reduction in saliva production. Infections, bacterial, viral, such as herpes simplex, varicella zosters, and cytomegalovirus. And fungal, which is candidia albicans. Bleeding, anywhere in the mouth, spontaneous or induced. Neurotoxicity, it mimics toothache and it's usually bilateral. Osteonecrosis of the jaw is exposed bone of at least eight weeks duration in either the maxilla or the mandible, secondary to use of systemic bisphosphonates and or other anti-resorptive medications or therapies. It's also referenced as medication-related osteonecrosis of the jaw and anti-resorptive drug-related osteonecrosis of the jaw. The next type of therapy is radiation therapy. It uses ionizing radiation to treat cancer. Radiation impacts the cancer cell's ability to replicate and survive. Not all tumors are radiosensitive. Ability of the radiation therapy to actually kill the tumor. Head and neck radiation therapy produces acute short-term and chronic long-term effects in the oral cavity. Indications for radiation therapy. To treat a small localized tumor that is radiosensitive. Shrink a large tumor before surgery. Increase the effectiveness of chemotherapy when used concurrently. Prevent the spread of cancer or control residual tumor. Prevent a, or a reoccurrence of the cancer. Provide symptom pain relief for bone metastasis or palliative therapy. Types of radiation therapy. Extra, external beam. The conventional use of ionizing radiation applied outside of the body. Intensity modulated radiation therapy, IMRT. It was developed in the late 1990s. It's considered a high precision delivery of radiation. It's accomplished through computer guided images of target anatomy with radiation produced by a linear accelerator. It is used in the treatment of the head and neck cancer. The radiation dose is elevated at the site of the gross tumor while simultaneously sparing the surrounding normal tissue. Results in decreased side effects, better tumor targeting as compared to conventional external beam radiation. Uh, proton therapy, new method of radiation delivered, used in some head and neck cancer patients. Technique is considered more precise than IMRT with less damage to the surrounding oral structures, thus producing less acute and chronic oral complications, not widely available, more expensive to deliver care, presently lack of clinical trials compared to photon delivery method. Then there's internal source, radiation source such as a radium implants or seeds, is placed within the body. Less radiation is delivered to the surrounding tissues than when an external source is utilized. The doses of radiation therapy. Total dose depends on the type of tumor, treatment goals, and patient's ability to tolerate the treatment. The total radiation dose is approximately 30 to 7 GY. It is divided into equal doses conventionally or modulated fractions IMRT per day. It is given once a day, five days a week for five to eight weeks. The systemic effects of radiation therapy, skin reactions, it looks like a really bad sunburn, fatigue, 
nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and constipation. The oral complications of radiation therapy are, are oral mucositis, xerosomia, salivary gland hypofunction, radiation caries, dysquasia, infection, bacterial, viral, or fungal, trismus, or osteoradionecrosis. The next therapy is hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. This is used to treat cancers involving the bone marrow, including leukemia. The purpose is to substitute peripheral blood stem cells from the patient's or a healthy, complete, compatible donor. The types of hematopoietic cell, stem cell transplantation. There's autologous self, autologenic, human leukocyte antigen match donor, either related or unrelated, and syngenic, identical twin. The stages of transplantation process. Patient selection. So there's indications. Patient not responsive to chemotherapy alone. Relapse occurs after one or more remissions. The next is evaluation. Medical and dental assessments completed to ensure the patient is free of infection and physically able to undergo the preparative regimen. Then donor regimen, histocompatibility matching, bone marrow aspirate, aspirated from the iliac, crest, ribs, or sternum, conditioning a patient to, patients to receive the bone marrow grafts, so they have to be conditioned before they can receive it, preparative high-dose immunosuppressive regimen, chemotherapy alone or with total body irradiation. The purpose is to kill the malignant cells and suppress the immune system so new stem cells, marrows, will engraft. The transplantation, it's done through intravenous infusion of donor's marrow stem cells. And panseotopenia is a reduction in all cellular elements of the blood, which includes white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. Protective isolation for the patient is required. The patient is highly susceptible to infection. Function of new marrow to produce peripheral blood elements begins after 10 to 20 days. In the recovery, the immune recovery is about 3 to 12 months long, and then the long-term recovery is about 1 to 3 years long. So acute complications of this. So there's acute graft versus host disease, GVHD. The description, the donor's T lymphocytes see the host cell antigens as foreign and react against the host tissue. So the symptoms are, they are present during the first 100 days post-transplant. Painful red skin rash starting on the palms of the hands and soles of feet and progressing to the upper trunk. Severe persistent diarrhea, jaundice, elevated liver enzymes, and liver tenderness. There can be infections which are bacterial, viral, and fungal. Viral infections are herpes simplex, varicella zoster, and cytomegalovirus, and fungal again is candida albicans. Gastrointestinal, hepatic, cardiac, pulmonary, hematologic, and neurologic complications, and then oral complications, oral mucositis, it usually appears 10 to 14 days post-transplant, xerostomia, viral and fungal infections, um, herpes simplex virus, and then your candida albicans. Chronic complications, so chronic GVHD. This may affect all organs of the body and it can appear up to two years post-transplant. The oral complications are oral mucositis, oral infection, periodontal infection, xerostomia and dental caries, poor oral hygiene, and difficulty eating and chewing. Mucositis management, so prevention, oral health, maintenance. Basic oral care using a soft toothbrush. As dental flossing is technique sensitive, use may be precluded during cytotoxic treatment. Use of a bland mouth rinse such as normal saline three to four times a day. Cryotherapy or ice chips, Recommended for selected patients populations such as multiple myeloma patients receiving high doses of melphalan and head and neck cancer patients receiving bolus dosing of 5 fluorosolin. Instruct patients to hold the ice chips in the mouth immediately prior to and during the administration of the chemotherapy agent. Palifermin, a human recombinant keratinocyte growth factor. It's given intravenous infusion in selected populations prior to peripheral blood stem cell transplant. It's given for three consecutive days before and after myelotoxic therapy for a total of six doses. Benzodiamine mouth rinse, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agent in patients receiving moderate dose radiation therapy, up to 50 GY. Note, this drug is not available in the United States. The treatment of established mucositis. Mouth rinse containing Benadryl. 
or diphenhydramine hydrochloric acid in combination with other agents, usually coating agents and topical anesthetic. Evidence does not support a direct effect of this antihistamine on the prevention or treatment of mucositis lesions. This type of rinse is often used to palliate pain topically. Systemic pain medication. Patient controlled analgesia with morphine for the management of pain, pain due to oral mucositis in patients undergoing hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Transdermal fentanyl patch may be effective in the management of mucositis pain due to conventional and high dose chemotherapy with or without total body irradiation. Morphine mouth rinses may reduce the severity and duration of mucositis pain in patients undergoing head and neck area radiation therapy. Doxepine mouth rinses 0.5% may be effective for the management of pain due to oral mucositis. The dental hygiene care plan, so the objectives. It is recommended patients be in optimal oral health before starting any type of cancer therapy. Overall objectives include assess the oral care, oral cavity for any signs of hard and soft tissue infection, eliminate or minimize sources of dental or periodontal or soft tissue infections, eliminate, eliminate or minimize any areas of chronic trauma or tissue ir irritation, provide preventive oral care education to the patient and or the caregiver. So some personal factors. The very word cancer brings fear and anxiety to the patients, and many times it is viewed by the patient as cancer equals death. This will impact anything taught to the patient. Suggestions include the following. Encourage the patient to bring a friend or family member along to take notes during teaching visits. Provide written instructions appropriate to reading level of the patient and make sure they are written in patient's native language. Provide positive reinforcement and be creative in helping the patient maintain optimum oral health. Show acceptance and empathy, acknowledge the appropriateness of the patient's concerns, and practice active listening skills. Some oral care protocol. The following sections are adapted from the oral complications of cancer treatment. What the oral health team can do from the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research, National Institutes of Health publication. Similarity exist between the three forms of treatment, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. There are differences that dental hygienists need to know to provide appropriate oral care. Numerous grading skills have been developed to assess the severity of oral mucositis, but none of the other oral complications. Um, one mucositis scale, scales are useful for this, and it measures mucositis in the nursing medical setting. It documents treatment, toxicity, in clinical and or research settings, and it communicates with intraprofessionally professionals. So pre-treatment therapy. Patients who do intensive personal oral care in preparation for and during their cancer therapy have a reduced risk for the development of oral complications. Head and neck radiation therapy. Patients receiving radiation therapy to the head and neck are at a high risk for developing severe oral complications that will affect the patient in the short and long term. During radiation therapy, encourage daily oral care, including biofilm removal at least twice daily. Encourage daily fluoride use, if any form, tray brush on rinse. Monitor the patient for trismus. Check for pain or weakness in masticatory muscles in the radiation field. Instruct the patient to exercise three times a day, opening and closing the mouth as far as possible without pain and repeat 20 times. After radiation, for the first six months after cancer treatment, recall the patient every four to eight weeks as needed for non-surgical periodontal therapy. Review instructions for daily oral self-care. Also reinforce the importance of daily oral self-care. After mucositis subsides, consult with the radiation medical oncologist regarding timing of denture appliance fabrication. Observe for trismus, demineralization, and caries. Lifelong daily applications of prescription fluoride in and any form are recommended for the patient with chronic salivary gland hypofunction. Advise against oral surgery on irradiated bone, bone because of the risk of osteoradionecrosis. Tooth extraction, if unavoidable, is conservative. Prophylaxis agent possible osteoradionecrosis is accomplished with pentafilin 400 mg pre and post extraction. Chemotherapy. The extent of oral complications of chemotherapy depends on the following. The degree of preexistent dental and oral disease. The chemotherapy drugs used in their dosages. The use of concurrent or adjunctive radiation therapy to the head and neck. 
the patient's personal daily oral hygiene. Before any dental and dental hygiene clinical procedures during chemotherapy, consult the medical oncologist before any dental or dental hygiene clinical procedure. Ask the medical oncologist to order blood work 24 hours before the oral surgery or other invasive procedures, such as periodontal scaling, root planning. Postpone when the platelet count is less than 50,000 mm3 to the third, or abnormal clotting factors are present, and or neutrophil count is less than 1,000 mm to the third. In patients with fever or unknown origin, as determined by the medical oncologist, check for oral source of viral, bacterial, and fungal infections. Encourage thorough oral self-care. Review indications for use of antibiotic premedication for patients with central venous catheters or peripherally inserted catheters, also known as central lines. There is no evidence suggesting this is beneficial and as such varies from practitioner to practitioner. Consult a medical oncologist for preference on using the American Heart Association's prophylactic antibiotic regimen or another antibiotic regimen. After chemotherapy, place the patient on a dental hygiene continuing care schedule when chemotherapy is completed and all side effects, including immunosuppressions, have resolved. For hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, some hematopoietic stem cell transplant patients develop acute oral complications, especially patients who have had allogenic stem cell transplant and developed GVHD. So after transplantation, monitor for oral infections of the soft tissues. Herpes simplex and candida albicans are the most common oral infections. Delay elective dental procedures such as implants for one year. Follow patients for long-term oral complications, changes in taste, xerostomia, and dental caries. Such problems are strong indicators of chronic GVHD. Continue to monitor the patient's oral health for biofilm control, tooth demineralization, dental caries, and oral infection. Follow transplant patients carefully for second malignancies in the oral region. Special care for children. Children receiving chemotherapy and or radiation therapy are at a risk the same oral complications as adults. Other actions to consider in managing pediatric patients include the following. Extract loose primary teeth and teeth expected to exfoliate during cancer treatment. Remove orthodontic bands and brackets if myelosuppressive chemotherapy is planned or if the appliances will be in the radiation field. Can you continually monitor craniofacial and dental structures for abnormal growth and development? Encourage routine daily personal oral care, including biofilm removal and fluoride application. Avoid cariogenic foods and drinks. If these are necessary to improve a child's weight, then have the child rinse with fluoridated water after eating or drinking. Documentation. Each patient's appointment is carefully documented to include at least the following. Cancer diagnosis, type of treatment, treatment start and completion dates, oncologist names and contact information, note any consults done with the oncologist, oral assessment, clinical care provided, patient teaching on each visit, any oral complications present, grade of oral mucositis, indicating severity and type of symptom management to prescribed. Plan follow-up visit plan care of care with proposed symptom management treatment outcomes.